Hey everyone, welcome again to the ThermalWorks Demo Kitchen. I'm Tim Robinson, Vice President of Marketing. I am so excited to welcome you to the second installment of our ThermaPen One Live Cooking Classes. Again, as we were launching this beautiful instrument into the world, we really wanted a way to emphasize the fact that all of the dramatic engineering improvements, the sub-second performance, the half a degree accuracy, the five-year warranty, the, the new durability, waterproof, all of that only matters in as much as it helps connect you to the food you are making. And uh, it, it's, it's really true of all great tools. If you think about it, the best cars are the cars that connect you to the road. The best televisions are the ones that envelop you in the content that you're watching. And in that same way, the Thermopen One connects you to the, the brisket that you're smoking or the, uh, the cake that you're baking or the bread or whatever it is that you're creating, your craft, it connects you to it more intimately by allowing you to make those split second decisions that you need to make about doneness, about uh, temperature, which affects all different parts of cooking from, from adding heat to chilling it. So uh, what we did is we gathered together some of our favorite people, uh, some of the best chefs and pit masters in the world, and we asked them, we asked them to think of one spectacular dish that they could teach you how to make using critical temperature control and using our new favorite thermometer, the Thermopen One. And I couldn't be more excited about uh, tonight's class. So Tuffy Stone, Tuffy Stone, the six time world barbecue champion. You may know that about him. You may not know that he was also a French trained, classically trained chef. So he really does represent all the different spectrum, the full spectrum of professional food making. Tuffy Stone, who's already an inductee in the Barbecue Hall of Fame. Tuffy Stone, the author of Cool Smoke, which I highly recommend and which you can buy right now on thermalworks.com in our book section. I'll just flip open here and show you one of the spreads to show you how luxuriant this book is with the, uh, the color photography, the step-by-steps, all the info that you need. This is a gorgeous book. I highly recommend it to you. He's an author. He's a TV personality. Uh, and he and his team, Cool Smoke, their colors are red and white. So I'm, I'm holding a red Thermopen one. Um, Leslie and Tuffy and, and George, Cool Smoke uh, have been legends in the barbecue circuit. More importantly, they are just remarkable people. Tuffy and Leslie are some of my favorite people to hang out with at a barbecue competition. Good, good people and unbelievably good at their craft. So it is a thrill for me, a personal honor for me to introduce Tuffy Stone. Take it away, Tuffy. Tim, you're making me blush. Oh man, I wasn't nervous till you said all that. No, that's not completely true. If, I hope everybody watched Eva Q uh, last Thursday. She knocked it out of the park. She did uh, such an amazing job. She, she was just given knowledge from the beginning of, of the class to the end. Um, I want to thank ThermoWorks for putting together this series. Um, some of the folks that you have uh, brought on to teach have been people I've looked up to for so long, and I'm just so proud and excited to, to be included on that list. Um, when I found out that ThermoWorks was creating a new product that was better than the first, I was like, how can you make anything better than, than the first one? I mean, ThermoPens became out there on the competition circuit for sure. Every, everybody had this. Um, it was just such a, for me, things are tools, whether, whether it's a grill or a smoker or a knife, it's, it's a tool and, and, and I need to be able to depend on them. Um, I have a, a lot of sayings and one of my sayings is when I go to a competition, I want to get there with everything that I need. I want sharp knives, uh, good wood, fresh rub, good meat. I want, I want all the things that, that uh, can put me in a place to cook my best food and you know, you mentioned the world championships, Tim, and uh, ThermoWorks, ThermoPen was involved with every one of those. When, when I found out that the, the ThermoPen one was going to read a temperature in one second, I'm like, all right, you're just showing off now. 
but um when when we started talking about this 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 class and and i, I wanted to think about some things of, of what i could cook that would where one second could really come in handy and and so and and the menu's kind of grown a little bit but i'm going to do fajitas and some of the proteins the, the initial two proteins that i was going to do was going to be skirt steak um which as you can see is is super thin and it's one of my favorite cuts of uh, but you know it, it cooks super super quick and and we're going to be cooking this directly over hot coals tonight uh direct grilling but i thought a, a super thin cut of beef that i want to cook that doneness to rare medium rare somewhere in there uh a one second read with the thermopin one would would be effective then i thought about seafood i think so many people overcook uh seafood all the time it's funny you know in the barbecue uh, i think our initial temps when cooking ribs and pork shoulders and brisket and things like that we undercook it um but with seafood we we tend to overcook it and so i really um i felt like it was so important uh to 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 try and, and demonstrate uh how quick a read we can do with the uh the thermopin one and so what we're, we're going to do shrimp fajitas we're going to do skirt steak fajitas and then i kept thinking it's like is that enough and so uh another protein that i'm going to bring in tonight is pork tenderloin because um pr probably one of the best things that ever happened to the pork industry is when the usda finally said you don't have to cook your pork to 165 degrees anymore um and they recommended an internal doneness of 145. i would argue that i like my pork to be done a little bit less than that and i'll get into that further down the road but uh we're gonna cook pork tenderloin as well and then i i i, I couldn't i couldn't stay within the corral so i've got some chicken breast that, that we've done as well so we're gonna have four proteins we're gonna grill some vegetables we're gonna make a, a really vibrant salsa um for me i also think about when i'm planning menus i want to think about uh cooking foods within the season season and 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 cooking things that i want to eat when it's when it's hot you know let's see so it's it's 84 to 84 degrees where i'm standing right now and so it's a it's a little sweltering and a little muggy here in 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 virginia so these vibrant colors the the lime the the jalapenos the the grilled vegetables these proteins they're they're just they're flavors that i enjoy to eat um at this time of the year uh, diva did probably one of my favorite ways of cooking on on her episode where she did a reverse sear i'm a big fan of of that i've got two grills going tonight i'm going to be running lump charcoal uh sometimes i'll use briquettes but i, I want to get a really hot fire tonight because uh my two most important things my two guiding lights uh if, if if i were to tell you the two most important things to me especially when cooking barbecue one is uh tenderness uh the best foods in the world are going to be the foods that have the best texture and i don't care if it's ice cream i don't care if it's caesar salad uh beef barbecue um uh, your favorite caesar salad is going to have really crunchy crisp romaine and really fresh crunchy croutons and it's going to be just the right amount of dressing and and so that texture is going to be so good the best ice cream is going to have the best mouthfeel and it's going to be creamy and and just you know feel great in the mouth and and barbecue is the same way barbecue uh, no one likes tough barbecue so when we cook things like brisket and shoulder and and ribs uh where these meats need to cook for hours and hours and hours uh to break these collagens down and and get that meat to a a, a nice texture um but this is where uh a, a, a really great tool like a thermopin one comes in into play and it's going to be uh with our longer cook items you know brisket for example uh at some point it, it's going to be uh letting you know when we start to get close to being in the temperature zone of when that brisket is going to be perfectly cooked and depending on what temperature you're cooking at 
if you're cooking at a lower temperature, the meat temperature will be done at a lower temperature. And if we cook at a higher pit temperature or grill temperature, uh, the internal temperature of that meat's gonna actually go uh, hotter. And, but anyways, I, I usually cook my briskets 275 to 300 degrees pit temperature. And for the most part, my briskets are usually at the doneness that I want somewhere between 205 degrees and 209 degrees. And what I like about the Thermopin one is not only is it giving me a, a great read and, and a great temperature reading, but I can also, it's a probe. So I can, I can slide that probe into the meat. And, and if I have to push, if there's any resistance at all, it's, uh, it, it needs to cook longer. Um, but anyways, texture, doneness is, is one of the two most important things to me when I'm making barbecue. The other thing that's my second most important thing is I like to say I like to treat smoke like salt and pepper. So for my bigger cuts, I want more smoke. Uh, for my uh, slighter, uh, uh, thinner cuts, I want less smoke. I always want the smoke to be a backdrop flavor uh, to the meat itself. I always want, in this case, we've got pork, chicken, shrimp, and beef skirt steak tonight. And I want that smoke to be a backdrop flavor uh, to the meat itself. And then my marinades and my salsas and all that stuff hopefully are just a really nice compliment to, to, to the, the cooked product itself. So as I was saying, we're doing the beef skirt steak. It's in between, it's part of the plate. It's uh, between the brisket and the flank. Um, it's, it's super delicious. It's, it's, these came, these are, this is chairman's reserve. It's a really great beef product, but for the sake of time, I've already marinated some of the, uh, I've already marinated some of the uh, skirt steak. And my marinade is gonna be the same for all the proteins tonight. My marinade is, uh, has soy sauce, lemon juice. It has uh, garlic, shallot, red wine vinegar. It's got uh, pickle juice, uh, pepperoncini is what I use tonight. Uh, and just, it's, it's, it's tangy, it's, um, it's, it's really fresh. When you're marinating meats, you the bigger, the thicker the cut, the longer the marinade. The thinner the cut, uh, the less time we want to soak it in the marinade. The uh, the the salt and the acid that's in this marinade can actually cook the meat itself. So probably about a 30 minute, 45 minute soak time for this skirt steak is all we all we need. And so I'm just going to take these and move them to a a tray and I'll, I'll pat them dry. The shrimp's not going to take as long in the marinade as this skirt steak did. I've already marinated the pork tenderloin and the shrimp. And I have got, uh, I've got the grill hot and ready to go. So I am just going to give these to my assistant my beautiful wife, Leslie, and she's going to dry those off. So now we're going to do the shrimp. These are 1620 shrimp. And as I was saying, it's going to be a quicker marinated time. And we're just gonna strain the shallot and the garlic out of this marinade. And we'll just move these around and we'll let these marinate for about 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna cook these in a grill basket. Uh, sometimes I will put them on a skewer because it makes it easier for them to handle. I'll put these back in the cooler. Thank you, man. As my grandmother would have said, I think I'll keep you. All right. So we're just gonna let the skirt steak air dry a little bit. We've got our shrimp in the marinade. I've got the pork tenderloin and I've got the chicken breast already marinated. 
And so they're just uh, hanging out in the cooler with the exception of the skirt steak. Now we're gonna make a salsa. Uh, I used uh, some really high quality plum ca uh, canned tomatoes for this. It's a blender one. Sometimes in season, I'll use really fresh local tomatoes. We'll use the Hanover tomatoes. Um, sometimes I'll make a salsa that's chunky. Um, it's funny for me. It, sometimes it's the mood that I'm in. Sometimes it'll be a, a chunky salsa. Sometimes it'll be a, a blender salsa. It's, uh, I can play around with the heat levels. It just depends on my mood. It also depends on who, who I'm cooking for. So anyways, we're just going to take the... tomatoes, put them in the blender. And uh, I've got lime, garlic, and since it's going in the blender, I'm going to mash this, but I'm going to just uh, blend it until it's smooth. I've got uh, five cloves of garlic. I had five cloves of garlic. And it's got lime juice. It's got some of the heat that's gonna also come in here. Um, chipotle and, and adobo, I, they come in little small cans. You can get them in the market. And so I've just put one chipotle in there. And then I took one teaspoon of the uh, adobo sauce that's in the can. And I'm gonna juice the lime. I've got a, a cup of cilantro leaves. I'm gonna put some kosher salt in there. If you like it spicy, you could add some more of the chipotle and adobo. You could add, uh, jalapenos are funny to me because sometimes they pack heat. Sometimes they don't have any heat at all. Uh, I tried this one earlier and it was, uh, your, your heat in the jalapenos is going to be mostly in the stem and the seeds. So if you, uh, I usually just will cut that out. I've got some jalapeno, kosher salt. I'm going to go to my blender. We'll, we'll adjust that for seasoning. Uh, I like to, actually, I like to make my salsa usually the night before. Uh, when I'm doing chips and salsa, I like the salsa to be cold. So uh, in this case, because it's going on the fajitas, I just wanted everything room temperature. But uh, that's the Cool Smoke Salsa. We'll be posting the website or uh, posting the recipe on the Thermo uh, Works Instagram story. But it's super simple. So I've got my salsa. Now I'm just gonna grill some vegetables with this. This is where um, I like to have fun too. So if I have a vegetarian that's coming for dinner, um, I might get a little creative on the vegetables. I might bring in some grilled asparagus. I like to, I like to see what, uh, what vegetables are within the season. So um, tonight I'm just doing a few different types of bell peppers and I'm gonna do red onion. Uh, I have this really great uh, grill basket that I like to use, but in this case, I'm just going to uh, leave these in large pieces. They're easier to manage on the grill. I can take the, they won't fall through the grate. And I'm just going to uh, uh, toss these in a little bit of uh, canola oil and a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, sometimes I'll use olive oil, um, just depends on my mood. So we'll have these vegetables. Uh, some of the side dishes that I like to serve with the fajitas is I like to do spicy pinto beans. Um, the, uh, sometimes I'll do, you know, some variation of rice. One of the things that's really nice about this fajita preparation is it makes for a great tailgate food. So I can, 
I can have all my vegetables prepped. I can have my marinade made. I can have it all in containers in, in a cooler. And so if I want to go do a uh, tailgate, then um, I can have everything prepped out, have my mise en place done, uh, my salsa done, my tortillas. Uh, I will toast those to order. We'll be doing that in a little bit. So anyways, I'm just going to do uh, three colors of peppers. And then with the onions, I prefer to use yellow onions uh, when I'm doing the fajitas. And I'm just going to take and uh, leave these in. I'm going to leave the roots on so they don't fall apart. And I'm going to put them in quarters. And I'll toss them in uh, some of the oil and salt and pepper as well. And we're just going to get this grill hot. So I was telling you earlier that I like to treat smoke like salt and pepper. Um, in this case, because it, it's going to be a really fast direct cook on a hot, uh, hot grill, I want, I want to get some of that char in there because I'm not going to be getting a lot of smoke. Um, if I was uh, cooking a, a bigger cut like butts or briskets or things like that, um, I would get a lot of smoke. I'd be cooking at a lower heat, but because I'm going to a hot grill tonight, it's going to be uh, most of that grill flavor I'm going to get that, that, that grill bitter flavor that I really enjoy so much is going to be coming from, uh, from, from the char, actually. I actually want to uh, slightly burn it a little bit. A little bit of oil. Toss it. Fresh cracked pepper. Whenever I'm making rubs or seasoning blends, I always prefer to use uh, spices in their whole form. So fresh cracked black peppercorns, fresh uh, cracked uh, pink peppercorns. When I'm using cumin and coriander, I like to toast those seeds and cool them and then grind them in a, in a coffee grinder. The flavors that you get when you freshly grind spices is so much better. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And I used to, used to travel all over the country doing these barbecue competitions and thinking about how much time I spent on the road and how much money I spent doing these contests. And, um, and, and I thought to myself one day, are my spices as fresh as they need to be? And I thought, you know, I probably have cinnamon that's been in my pantry for 15 years. And, and, and it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And so I, I came back home and cleaned out my spice uh, pantry, got rid of all the old stuff, um, refreshed them all, started buying smaller quantities of spices. Uh, spices will keep, if we make a seasoning blend or, or a rub or something like that, those flavors or those rubs will keep in a cool, dark place for months. So I just, if, if you're not grinding your own spices, I would recommend it. It makes for a much, uh, uh, a much more flavorful dish. So anyways, I'm gonna take these grill, uh, these vegetables over to the grill. And we're just gonna put these right directly over the coals. And I, I just want to get some char on these vegetables. I don't want to, uh, I want to get some char and want them to cook a little bit, but I want to keep uh, an al dente texture going on. I don't want them to get too soft. And I'm just going to put the uh, red, uh, red onion cut side down. And this is where you really need to stay on top of, uh, your grill. And I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but I've got hot coals over here and I've got no coals over here. So very much like what Danielle did. Uh, well, she was using two, uh, two pits at two different temperatures, but I like to be able to have a, a cool side and a hot side and I can just work my, uh, my vegetables or my meats back and forth. And if they get away from me a little bit, then uh, I can move them over to the cool side. So we're gonna, we're gonna just char these vegetables. Uh, we've got our salsa made. I'm picking up some color. Now this is, uh, these vegetables are something that you can do. Uh, they, they're gonna eat well room temperature, so they do not have to be hot. Um, this is gonna make for a really colorful, 
uh, presentation on the board. We'll have all these beautiful vegetables. I'll, I'll have a, uh, some fresh chopped cilantro that we'll garnish it with. Let's step this, uh, close this intake down for a second. And so we'll just cook those for a bit. And next we're gonna go to getting our meats ready. So I've got my skirt steak here. I've got my pork tenderloin. All these meats are gonna need to, all these proteins we need to cook at different temperatures. Move these shrimp around. We got our shrimp. I've got chicken breast. And I just realized that I did not add my cilantro. To my sauce. Push these leaves down. You put that in a container for me. All right. Turn my vegetables. All right, so with the four proteins, with the skirt steak, I'm gonna cook that to about 125 degrees. What happens with, with meats when we cook them is what's called carryover cooking. And once we take them off of the grill or the smoker, those, those meats are gonna to continue to cook. So that's why this thermopin one is so important, especially on the skirt steak. So it might be temping 120 degrees, 125 degrees on the grill. But once we take it off, it's going to continue to climb in internal temperature. Um, a, a thing that I like about uh, a long skirt steak is that we might have some more done pieces in some areas. So if you like yours a little more well done, the end pieces are going to be more done and the thicker parts are going to be uh, more rare, medium rare. Shrimp, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to cook that and, and, and they're going to be a super fast cook. So the, the, the shrimp will do the same thing. They'll do a carryover cooking. The pork tenderloin, I'm going to take it to about 140 degrees and then it'll continue to cook. And then the chicken breast is, uh, a, the, the white meat tends to dry out uh, or can dry out if it's overcooked. And I'm going to cook that to about 160 degrees and then it'll continue to climb as well. So we're going to pull these vegetables off, the rest. Bear with us. All right, so I've got some vegetables. And then I'm gonna cook these in the order of what takes the longest to cook. So the pork tenderloin is gonna take the longest. I'm 
I'm just gonna put that right beside the hot part and we're gonna let that start to char. The shrimp's gonna be the last item that I'm gonna cook and I'm gonna load this, this grill basket for that. Steak. Tortillas we're gonna use on a cast iron skillet and they'll go directly on the grill. What I like about this, uh, this whole preparation, this is something that we could do inside, we could do outside. Um, if we were doing it inside, obviously everything would be saute. I'm gonna use the cast iron skillet right on the grill and it's gonna diffuse that heat a little bit. And we will toast these tortillas on both sides till they just puff up. And then I'll land them on a plate and put a towel on them to keep them warm. Uh, when I'm cooking for my family, there's just a few of us. So I'll toast tortillas pretty much to order. I'll toast a tortilla for each of us. We'll make a fajita or a taco and then we will uh, sit down, eat that, and then I'll make another, and they just turn out better that way. Get this a little closer to the fire. I, uh, I'm a big fan of spritzing and spraying, so when I'm working the grill or the smoker, I like to uh apply a little bit of moisture when i'm cooking and so my go-to usually is apple juice when i'm cooking chicken it'll often be pineapple juice uh tonight i've just taken a little bit of the brine from the pepperoncinis and it's salty with a little bit of a uh, little bit of tang and i'll just spritz it starting to get some good color there Come in with my chicken. Thank you. And skirt steak glass. One of the things that I, uh, I, I recommend and teach all the time when I'm, when I'm cooking uh, grill, especially hot things, is to stay at the grill. Uh, there's nothing worse than buying a premium steak and getting it on the grill and then going outside or going inside to check the score on whatever game you're watching and come back only to see you, you, you burn up your steak. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay over here at this grill for the most part, bounce back and forth and uh, we're going to use a thermo pin uh, one just to make sure that we just hit our, our uh, temperatures perfectly. Uh, to carry over cooking, I mentioned another thing that's really important when cooking is allowing these meats once they come off of the grill to uh, to rest. And the bigger the meat, the longer the rest. The thinner the meat, uh, the shorter the rest. But all these meats will will uh, get better with a little bit of rest. As that meat cools down and that muscle, that, that fiber starts to relax, it'll just uh, make for a better, juicier cut uh, or uh, juicier bite. All right. So I'm going by color right now, but we're gonna break out the, uh, the thermal pin here in a second. All right, getting some nice char. All right. Anyway. 
Uh, do I have a recipe for a hot smoked salmon? Um, you know, I do a lot of salmon, um, but I do a lot of grab locks. Um, so uh, most of my most of my preparations for grab locks uh, or salmon or, or curing it, uh, I'll bring in uh, molasses. I'll bring in lemon and dill. I'll bring in uh, you know uh, flavors like that. With the hot smoked salmon, I'll usually come in with just a dry rub and or or a dry brine and cure it a little bit. But um, but I don't I don't have a marinade for a uh, a, a hot smoked salmon. All right, question: Do you prefer skirt steak? or fajitas uh, or skirt steak or flank for fajitas. So I've probably cooked more, more flank steak than probably anybody I know. In fact, I, I overcooked 80 pounds one day getting ready for a catering. And, uh, and of course I had gotten distracted and I wasn't using my, uh, my, my thermometer, my thermal pen. But anyways, uh, I'm a sucker for, for flank steak. Um, I, I love flank steak. I think, uh, I think the thing I like about skirt steak with fajitas better than flank steak is I, I find the skirt steak to be more delicate and, and, to, and to work with that, work with that uh, tortilla just a little bit better. All right, so this skirt steak is cooking really fast. And see, it's already... What I love about this one is so parts of it are 130, parts of it are 118. I'm getting really good char on it. I got a lot of meat going on here. I'm gonna pull this one over, just let it rest. If I uh, more than likely it's gonna carry over to the doneness I'm looking for. Chicken's uh, only about at 103 right now. So. Let's see. Other questions. All right. So there was a question about uh, the differences between lump and briquette. So what I like, uh, I like them both. Uh, lump charcoal will tend to run hotter. Um, it doesn't need quite as much oxygen, so I can really close down the intake uh, uh, when I'm cooking with a uh, with lump charcoal and I can, I can cool it down and it doesn't choke out the fire. Briquettes, I tend to run the intake more open and, and, and I like to let those breathe more. If I step it down, uh, sometimes it just doesn't breathe quite as much as I like. So lump generally burns hotter and doesn't need quite as much oxygen to, to run a good fire. What wood, ah, what wood is burning for what reason? So when I first started doing barbecue, I thought that I would cook with apple wood. Apple wood is a, a really mild, gentle wood. And we have apple orchards about an hour away from here. And I thought that'll be what I'll, I'll cook with. But I could not get apple all the time, even though we had orchards nearby. So the wood that I could get all the time was was hickory. And so I started, I started learning how to cook with hickory. A lot of people will say that hickory is a, a stronger, more assertive flavored wood, but not the way that I burn it. Um, anybody that knows me, I, I will cut my wood down even smaller than that. And I will do what's called log cabin style. And uh, the big thing about fires is, is letting a fire breathe. A fire that doesn't breathe will create creosote. And that creosote will impart really bitter flavors on whatever it is that you're cooking. So uh, by allowing air movement in the wood, uh, we'll just run a, a lot cleaner fire. And my method, I've gotten so refined at it that even, um, I could probably take any wood, uh, you, as long as there's airflow, I can take a, a, a stronger wood and still have a really mellow flavor to it. And that is um, what I was saying earlier about treating smoke like salt and pepper and not 
not over smoking whatever it is that you're cooking. When we're doing radiant grilling like this, it's not. All right, so that's 127. It's just amazing how fast these things are. So I've got, got some skirt steak done. Got a beautiful pork tenderloin going here. It's just so fast. All right, so skirt steak is done. Chicken and the pork need to cook a little more. We're gonna get our shrimp loaded into the basket. And I just want to get these kind of spread out so they're not stacked on top of each other. So that when I go to put these over the coals, they'll cook quick. And, and all right. What other questions we have? I heard someone, heard that someone should not smoke, if not, I mean, grill seafood in the same smoker. Uh, I, someone's uh, saying that they've heard that you shouldn't cook uh, meat or beef in the same cooker that you would cook seafood. I would disagree with that. I don't subscribe to not cleaning a pit. I, I will power wash my comp pit before every competition and wash those grates, wash the barrel. I don't believe in, uh, you know, the previous cooks imparting good flavor. And so when I'm cooking uh, fish or, or beef or chicken or pork on a, on a, on a grill, it's, uh, uh, I'm, right now I'm grilling at 550 degrees. So uh, from a safety standpoint, we have no concerns there. All right. It's just amazing to me that, all right. I have this analogy when it comes to cooking meats. Um, it's, it's like a train, a train that um, when it goes from stop to start will be really slow initially, especially meats like brisket and things like that. But as that train builds up speed and builds up inertia, the, the, the speed starts to quicken at a faster rate meats are the same way. And so when we put a brisket on the cooker, for example, and we go from 40 degrees and put it on a 275 degree smoker, it's probably gonna take four hours or so for the internal temperature of that brisket get to get to 165 degrees. It's not gonna be done until 195 degrees, but the once, once it, and there's gonna be what's called the stall and 165 degrees, that, that brisket's gonna start to slow down in its internal temperature. And it's gonna be, cause it's starting to push out steam and, and, it's, and it stops for a little bit. And when you're cooking and having that experience for the very first time, it can be very unnerving. Two things are gonna fix it, time and temperature. Once it gets past 165 and gets to like 170, 175 degrees, it's really gonna start to, to pick up its cadence of, of the temperature rising again. And that's what's happening with these smaller cuts right now. All right, so my, my chicken breasts just went from like 120 something to now they're temping 149, 152, 158. Get to the doneness that I want really fast. So I'm gonna move these away from, further away from the uh, coals. And it's the same thing with this pork tenderloin right now. This thermo pin is just amazing. So it's, it's like 130, 135. It's gonna get to the doneness that I want. I'm gonna pull all of these meats off to uh, allow them to rest. And then I'm going to do the shrimp, uh, what the French would say, a la minute. And it's gonna be super fast. I've got some beautiful skirt steak. All right, so these are really close. So I'm gonna get my cast iron skillet on this grill to start getting ready to 
toast the tortillas. We're gonna cut our vegetables. Do you ever, all right, so the question was, do you ever combo sous vide with smoke and grill? Advice on that. So burn-ins are so amazing. If we smoke them on the smoker, chill them, vacuum seal them, uh, put them in the circulator and, and re-thermalize uh, re those in the, uh, in the sous vide. The texture is unbelievable. So the burn-ins is the only place that I have used the uh, sous vide uh, and barbecue, but what a great tool. All right, this meat's looking really good. I, I hope we have smell vision on. I'm gonna cut some of these vegetables. That's something else, I didn't do it tonight, but a lot of times I'll char uh, jalapenos uh, and blister them. And I'll make that part of my vegetable garnish as well. Uh, this meat looks so good. All right. So I'm going to go now. My chicken and my pork are pretty much there. Put the shrimp directly over the coals. All right, that's done. Do you spritz chicken breast? Uh, the question is, do you spritz uh, the chicken breast as well with apple juice? I use apple juice a lot, but in competition barbecue, one of the things that we're trying to achieve is bite through skin on chicken. And so my go-to spray for chicken is pineapple juice. Um, it's a, a natural tenderizer. In fact, if you soak chicken in, in pineapple juice for too long, it'll actually cook the meat and break it down. So the, my go-to for chicken is, is pineapple juice. Uh, my go-to, generally speaking, though, is, is, is apple juice for everything. I like to use a high-quality apple juice. Um, any advice on doing tri-tip? Yeah, so tri-tip has been my go-to meat for events lately. Um, tri-tip is shaped like a triangle, hence its name, or uh, even like a boomerang. And, and at the one point, the grain runs that way. With tri-tip, we want to slice it against the grain. And what's interesting to me, and it was actually my friend uh, Sterling Ball that... Um, that brought this to my attention, but I like to cook my tri-tip beyond medium rare, which is, uh, was surprising to me. I would have thought that, um, I would have thought that I would have enjoyed tri-tip more medium rare, but actually taking it up to like 138 to 140 actually makes for a better chew. Any advice on that? You take, do you take a uh, large meat, say a bone prime in straight from the fridge uh, to the grill or believe, uh, to, so I like to take, all, I like to take all of my meats and let them come out to ambient temperature uh, before I put them on the grill. And so, uh, so I'm not going right from the refrigerator. I'm not going right from the refrigerator to the smoker. Um, I'm going to bring it out, let it warm up a little bit. All right. So my chicken. One forty seven. It's one third one forty. It's amazing how quickly it cooks. So anyways, I've got my proteins now with the exception of my shrimp.
and these are going to get there really fast. Tortillas next. And we're going to go right to this cast iron skillet. And we're just going to uh, cook them until they puff up, flip them over. I don't want them to get crispy. some of these vegetables. I got some char on there. I like that bitterness. They still got texture. They're uh, they're not mushy. As I was saying earlier, we can get really seasonal with vegetables. I mean, onions and peppers are such a classic, but we could really get into summer squashes. We can get into uh asparagus in the spring uh of course we're certainly going to use avocado My wife's favorite. She loves onions and peppers and garlic. <laughs> Inside joke. A little more salt and pepper. And the shrimp. I've got a, they're all about 150. I've got my shrimp, I've got my skirt steak, I've got my chicken, I've got my vegetables. Now we're going to cut an avocado. And we're gonna to start toast. I've got my salsa.
We're just going to come in. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's nice and pink, light pink. Uh, my mom, if she were still around, she would not want to eat her pork this color, but we have not, it's because of trichinosis, but we haven't had a documented, documented case of trichinosis in the States in a very long time. It's because we've changed the way that we uh, feed our hogs. So I would be, a, uh, I think you could take your pork to, to 140, knowing that it's going to carry over cooking and get up to 145. And I would be all right with even cooking it less than that. We're just going to slice this against the grain. You can see again, just beautiful doneness. Thanks to our thermo pin. It look good. That smells so good. You can see it's a little more done on the end pieces. This is so good. So one of the things I like to do sometimes uh, once I've plattered everything up, is come in and hit everything with a little bit of salt and pepper, or you can put a little fajita seasoning on there. I'm cutting this all against the grain. Smells so good. All right, so that's enough of the skirt. Come in with the chicken breast. This is uh, a really nice dish for just setting up buffet. That's a little bit more done than I prefer. This one feels better. Nice. All right. Sit. Got our chicken. And a tortilla. So I'll just stack up these tortillas onto a plate. Put a towel on them. Like I was saying, I will do this uh, to order when I have fewer people. And we just want to toast it. All right. So as I build a tortilla, I will check the, sh the chat for questions. Nice. All right, so we got a toasted tortilla. I'm gonna go with the skirt steak because I'm a beef guy at heart. Some peppers. Some salsa. Some avocado. And some fresh cilantro. And a little squeeze of lime. All right, I was not nearly as neat as Diva Q. All right, so I'm just gonna hit it with a little lime. And there you would have it. Um, anyways, let's go to uh, what knife am I using? So I've got a bunch of knives that I'm using. I have got uh, uh, 
uh, carbon steel knife that I use uh, forever that's Japanese. I've got, um, I've got a Hinkle that I've had here forever. I, I've got a problem with knives. One of my favorite brands is a, a brand called Nenix. Can you explain how carryover uh, heat works after cooking? So it, it kind of goes back to this whole train analogy of uh, um, we built up this this uh, this uh, uh, this momentum of this uh, this this meat charge or t uh, heat in the meat and especially the bigger meats. And so uh, as that train gets going, as that temperature goes up, it continues to go even once we put it off the heat. So uh your thinner cuts it won't go up quite as much it might go up just five degrees uh bigger cuts like uh brisket could continue to to go up for uh higher temperatures than that um with the bigger cuts it's we want to make sure that we uh hold that meat hot but we don't want to put it into a, a cooler or a camber or something like that and and let that meat steam out so a lot of what we do when we're cooking big cuts, it's really important how we manage the, how we hold that meat for a long time. So your bigger cuts, we want to hold them warm, but we want to start to bring that internal temperature down a little bit. Um, one of the things that I teach when it comes to competition barbecue is with your tough cuts of meat, like ribs, pork butts, brisket, that meat needs to eat well, cool in order to do well in competition barbecue. So we really have to cook those meats until they're truly tender and those collagens are broken down. Um, but by the time it goes through the judging process, more than likely those meats are going to be room temperature. So you want to, you want to cool it down. Uh, you, you want to uh, make sure that it eats well when it's cool. Uh, I think that's it on the questions. Um, Anyways, oh, I didn't do a shrimp. I'll do a shrimp now. Mm. All right. I wish everybody was here. I got some crew that's going to be able to eat well tonight, but I just want to, uh, I want to thank Thermoworks for, for putting this uh, group together um, and inviting me to do this. You outdid yourself with the Thermopin one. It's just amazing. Like, like it, uh, I'm, I'm kind of kidding you a little bit. It's like for it to be better than the first one is amazing to me, but uh, just a really great tool that I depend on all the time to make sure that I, I get perfect done this food. So anyways, thank you for having me. Um, uh, I was watching you turn your meat off and can you explain that? I, you know, someone told me one time, if you're looking, you're not cooking. That's not me. I'm a looker. I have to peek all the time. And I like to turn meat all the time. I was cooking over really hot coals tonight on the grate. So I want to get that char. I want to get that sear there, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to burn it up. So for me, uh, the flipping process when it's hot is preferred when I'm doing my lower temperatures at 225, 275, then, uh, then I, I don't touch it quite as much. Anyways, Thermoworks, thank you so much. And Thank you, everybody who joined us. But pork, chicken, steak, shrimp, vegetables, all in the same class. I don't think I've ever wanted to stand next to Tuffy and eat that uh, more than just now. But we hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Be sure to check out Thermopen1 on thermworks.com and, and check out Tuffy's awesome book, Cool Smoke. And please tune in next week. Tell your friends. Let's get this, this train going. We'll have Ethan Schlebowski next week doing beer-battered fish and chips. It should be awesome. See you then. Thanks.